are yes, live. we are live. Two us weeks alive. ago, we were also alive. <laughs> and we shall hopefully be alive in another two weeks. I might you know, be the... dead. I'm going to have to ask a, our my necromancer buddy to have me risen for the occasion. Well, then you'll be unalive. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, wait. I mean, there's probably a better way of saying that. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, oh, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it's it's been a week. It's been a it's been a couple of weeks. Um, lately, in the past few days, I've been in a I don't know, pretty crumpy mood, um, just because waking up that way, bad dreams yeah. maybe. I don't know. Well, the Oops. rain is terrible, and oh, the rain doesn't bother me. That doesn't bother me at all. No, I know, I know, but they can less. Mick Ryder's hey. already waving. Hello, hey, hello, Mick. hello there, Mick. Yeah, but it's like I don't you? know. I was Maryland. Maryland. Who's, That's where who's Mick's Mar from. Oh, I, thought, I was going to say, who's Marilyn? <laughs> but, um, yeah, yes, Marilyn is a real place. <laughs> we think somewhere outside of Texas. I lived there for a bit in that <laughs> bloody vortex. The place called, was it? Hello, Rita. Uh, oh, heck, where I could normally say where it's from. It's 15 <laughs> miles from D.C. Oh, the say? magical DC. Oh, I can't remember where the place was called now. Uh, it'll hit me halfway through this, and I'll yell it out real loud. And it's going to be a fun time. <laughs> Okay. Oh, look, it's 8 o'clock. I'm going to start officially. All right. In three, two, one. Hello, you once again found a Texas Steampunk Connection. We are coming to you live and indirect if you're uh, listening to us later. <laughs> we are broadcasting to you from our various bunkers and airships, and we are going to oh, attempt to talk steampunk. If not, you know, a bunch of BS. We'll have fun. <laughs> but there'll be some steampunk involved eventually. Because, you know, I did I did do my homework, and I hope these other two also did their homework. I got something. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, once again with me, as always, is Thax, the Gentleman Adventurer, you and Jack from Steam Chest. How you hello, doing, hello. guys? <laughs> we still, we have four listeners already. I'm sure one oh, of them is probably Jack. We are, throwing no, off my actually, numbers. Actually, I'm not on yet. <laughs> We're about to have All a right, awesome. Then we do have four people watching. One of which is Rita and Mick, and Rita, one of our, our one of our most loyal listeners, who's also a Patreon supporter, as well as uh, Kitty and Jenny Shaver is now a Patreon supporter oh, as well. Awesome. Thank you guys. <laughs> but Rita is the one who tunes into the show before we even go on. Yeah, exactly. She's here more often than we are. <laughs> <laughs> She, she might she could she could actually pick up where we left off on occasion and yeah, we, <laughs> may have, we may have to have her on just for the fact that she's you know have a, she can keep up with like the historical relevance of everything we've talked about <laughs> yeah i mean we actually met Those her in person she, she, she yeah she she came and met us on halloween that one year that last mm -hmm. That, that, last year? That, no, not last year. year. One year. Last year, yeah. <laughs> one year. That one year, you know, back before the COVID days, wasn't it? No, it was during COVID days. No, it was during COVID. We, yeah, we, <laughs> was, we took a little risk there. Yeah, but we had masks. We were good. We were safe. Enough. It worked out. Usually, yep. Ah, so... <laughs> Uh, let's just get the ball rolling again. Once again, we will do the podcast within a podcast that I'm just going to call. Hey, what are you drinking now? <laughs> Yay. Right. Uh, hi. Go ahead. Let's go with Thax first. Thax. Oh, wow. Okay, really? All right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I got this drink from uh, How to Drink, uh, which is a, a YouTube channel. I highly recommend. If <laughs> There's you, a YouTube uh, channel to tell you how to drink? There is a YouTube channel, that, and, and, uh, and I recommend it. It is very informative. <laughs> And entertaining. Cool, cool. Um, uh, so uh, tonight I am going to make a beer cocktail. Ooh. Um, one of a few that they covered only recently. And I thought that sounded interesting. I'm going to start with this uh, Revolver Brewing uh, Citrus Blonde Ale. Okay. Uh, their, their Blood and Honey line. And uh, what I found is I, I bought it to drink beer. And I, found <laughs> it didn't really, I didn't really like it very much. Oh, okay. Um, it didn't taste as citrusy so much as kind of, to me, a little pickly. I don't know. It, Blood it orange is pickly? Orange. That's weird. Maybe you should get your, 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 your nose oh, checked. I'm getting an Maybe. I'm getting an echo of myself, guys. <laughs> there might be an echo in here. So, um, thanks to How to Drink, I, uh, 
I thought I'm going to try to doll this up and turn it into something that I enjoy. Oh, sounds have good. You heard, have you heard of a radla before? Or, I or think what? so. I think so. Again? It is basically beer and a, lemonade. A rattler. Oh, that sounds entertaining. And I've got this uh, raspberry lemonade Ooh. at your local grocery store. Ooh. Uh, I like that stuff. The raspberry lemonade is pretty good. I like it, but it's it's a bit strong for me. Mm. Very sweet. So you're going to pour it into your beer to, to cut the flavor. Lemon. So I'm just pouring it right in my beer. Maybe a 60-40 okay. split. Hmm. And uh, it really, it really tones down, tone down, tones down the beer, but also uh, sort of mellows out the lemonade, and I find it very, very refreshing. Oh, awesome! I so might not try that. Yeah, I, I will too. So it's it's good if you have a a lager or a, a a light ale that you find you didn't really like that much. Which is most of them for me. <laughs> you have friends who don't don't like beer, and you want to try to have them try something new that maybe they will find palatable. Rita, because <laughs> I know hey, Rita don't... doesn't drink beer. She doesn't drink beer. <laughs> she really um, likes her water, the adult of all beverages. Yeah, that stuff That's will kill you. Something worth trying, maybe. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, okay. So that sounds good. I'm. I'll go next. Uh, okay. Well, you know, obviously, I I found a, a porter, and this uh -huh. is a company. It's a. It's a. I've had this company before, but not this particular one. Um, it's called. It's a black, black butte, black butt, <laughs> porter, <laughs> but raspberry porter. <laughs> oh. He likes so speaking of raspberry, yeah, there's some raspberry here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, but I know I've had I've had this company before, the Black Butt before, but it's not the Butte. Raspberry. Yeah. Butte. Butte. It's Butte. <laughs> like Butte, like Buda, Butter, Buddha. Like, Buddha. Like, like it's a place, a Butte. Butte. I think it's yeah. a mountain or some sort mm -hmm. of. Yes. B U T. Jenny Lynn Shaver has. Uh... Well, hello, Jenny. <laughs> Thanks How for the support, doing? Jenny. Ahoy, yes. Thanks once again. I just I mentioned you earlier about being a Patreon supporter. And mm. isolated hill with steep sides and a flat top. So like everything in uh, everything in Utah, essentially. Everything in Utah. That's not bad. It's it's really smooth. Very, very smooth. And there is there is that really there's a small hint of raspberry. You can actually like there's a small hint of raspberry in the in the back there. It's not too strong, not overly strong raspberry. You know. I, I, I like just it. Had a, an interesting thought. Once the the Patreon thing catches on a little more, I think each one of us <laughs> needs to buy each other beer and have all three of <laughs> us make try drink it, it at the same time and see what happens on the stream. <laughs> it's like here, I want you to try this. Yes. <laughs> that therefore now we're going out to find the weirdest, strangest stuff for us all to try. <laughs> uh -oh. Just try this. Ah, you don't want to know. Some back alley. Have you guys tried that pickle beer? No. See, see, there's <laughs> culture there. <laughs> well, we had the pickle shot when that that one bar. That we yeah, had. but that's just that's just pickle brine. <laughs> yeah, you, you know you shoot between whiskeys. Now there's there's a pickle beer made by a pickle company. <laughs> so um, how do you sandwich your 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 pickle brine with whiskey? <laughs> that's, a, that's uh, I don't a know another story. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, Jack. What what are you drinking? I have me a nitro cold brew coffee from Guinness. I'm about to open it. I've had those. I had that too. I've had the Guinness one, I think. Have I? Oh, yep. Does it have the little the ball in there? That's oh, yeah. A, no, that, that's what it explodes yeah. and everything goes great. Yeah. <laughs> the way I like my beer. And uh, oh, this stuff, if you like the flavor of coffee, this stuff has it, and it tastes really good. At first, I was kind of like, uh, I almost want to put cream in this thing. It's so thick and tastes, <laughs> it's so heavily tasted coffee. But uh, it's like an an un put some uh, some some Bailey's uh, some Bailey's yeah, to it. Oh, there's <laughs> Irish car bomb as well. Just go for it, you know. Yeah, <laughs> chug. It's a caffeinated. I guess I can't say that anymore. What do they call that? What do we come up with the fact that they call it something different oh, now? I forgot what they called that because it's not it's not technically all accurate that. anymore. Yeah. But uh, no, it's it's a very strong coffee. I it, it tastes almost like a chocolate coffee, so mm -hmm. it reminds me of the 
oh, the Starbucks cold brew, like you buy in the glass bottle at every convenience store known to man and you just shake it before you, you know, it says mocha on it. <laughs> it tastes like that with no sugar in it. It's like a sugarless version of that. But now there's, they put, you know, alcohol in it. So, and it's like, <laughs> it is only 4% alcohol. So medium on the, uh, the list for me, I usually tend to like to go with something that's more of a seven or a nine if possible. Of course. Wow. Yeah. Like Imperial this, stouts and stuff. Yeah, like this with this Black Butte Raspberry Porter is a 6.8% alcohol and it, it says Bend, Oregon in it. So apparently they're in, it's made in Oregon. Oh, so. that's a long distance. So mine's four and a half before I put lemonade in it. So now it's probably like two and a half? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Which is, I mean, for summer drinking in the afternoon yeah. in the heat, this is I don't perfect. want a whole lot. You just need something to get you slightly buzzed until you have to eat. Yeah, sounds good. Or, you know, just before you're mowing, or as you're mowing the yard. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you were about to say something about, you know, your first drink in the morning. I'm like, all right. That'll good get you man. going. Yeah. No, 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 no. And to answer your earlier question, Wikipedia says that is an Irish slammer or an Irish or a Dublin drop. Ah, okay. They also list an Irish bomb shot, but I think that's probably still offensive. <laughs> so we'll go with the other two i like it i like it perfect that'll work that'll work right, uh well. so i'm guessing that concludes our what are you drinking now the podcast within a podcast <laughs> and we shall move along wow where do we go from here okay <laughs> how's everybody been i know it's been busy right, well let's yeah let's been let's uh go ahead and uh i don't know let's do a quick little advertisement here we have we have a patreon now it's only has one um, one tier, uh, basically, and it's basically a three dollar tier, and we call that thank you very much. Thanks for, or buy us a beer, uh, as uh, as Jenny says, have members buy you all around. Well, that's kind of what they're doing when they join our Patreon. So, Jenny, you've already bought us a beer. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and so is Rita. Rita. Thank you very much. You bought us a beer as well. We thank you very much every, every month. Cheers. <laughs> twice a month. Um, like, and as I said before, um, I added on the on that tier. Uh, it's just a it's a list of over one hundred comic books. That are steampunk and steam or steampunk related at least like diesel punk roku punk you know that kind of stuff and it's over 100 comic books titles and well <laughs> and i've read them all and i own them all that are on that list there are there i know there's i know there's plenty of other comics out there that i haven't mentioned and are not that list and i will get to them eventually <laughs> sooner or later if you know one that's not on the list or if you just think you or if, if you don't even have access to the list but you know of a comic book that's steampunk or steampunk related um, send me a message or on, on Facebook or wherever, and I will look into it. I've and also added the uh, calendar for uh, upcoming events that we'll probably talk about here um, for, for Steampunks, mostly in Texas, but the major ones I'm also trying to list there, too, mm -hmm. for your edification. Um, so you'll be hopefully a little more up on uh, the, the current... Uh, events to plan uh or attend or meet people and have a good time now that we can do that again and i have posted all sorts of covert shots of fax's uh swimsuit you know, model. what <laughs> i have not seen those oh okay, you said that well, was for your private collection <laughs> i mean i had to share them with our i mean they're going in steep chest too collectors what <laughs> You should at least get him autographed. Oh, I mean, that, that'd be next. And, and maybe a couple of mustache hairs for, for those people. Oh, that's for, that's a higher level tier. Yeah, I think, that's for the, for the premium package right there. <laughs> but, <laughs> now I guess we're going to actually have to go and shoot those for the, for the Patreon tax. That's hilarious. <laughs> there was a, a guy in my neighborhood, Buy Nothing Group, who was passing on a uh, a sort of a men's onesie, very Victorian swimming costume? Uh, I wanted it so bad, but yeah, it was like I, I, three I, I think I posted small. that. <laughs> but also, I mean, I guess for, uh, speaking of uh, events coming up, the Wild Wild West Con is on. They're they're having it this year, but. Um, well, they had a sale, but now they're, well, the hotel is sold out now. Um, yes. I sent, I sent you all a message saying, Hey, we want to go. We should jump on this. And you guys never responded. So <laughs> I guess we're not going. There are other hotels. 
There are other hotels. I also am kind of leery about it this year. Oh, oh, look, okay, well, hold on, hold on. We have another, we have someone else here. Hey, there's uh, Nicole, aka oh, Natalie really? McTaggish, joining us once again. <laughs> Hi, I'm back. Hello, Hello, how are you doing? I'm keeping afloat. <laughs> keeping afloat, that's all we can ask, that's all we can ask for, I guess. Love yeah. your hair, by the way. It really Thanks. keeps the head, that keeping afloat vibe. <laughs> they, yeah, no, my hair, I walked outside today and it went poof. And... That's why I wear a hat right now, I feel you. That's why it's yes, that me, me too, me too. Uh, that's why it's in a <laughs> clip back here. So yeah. So anyway, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, you, you were saying you were wary about this year, Jack. Why? What's going on? I'm kind of wary about it mainly because all right. So what happened was, old uh, Wild Wild West Con used to be at the vid, uh, movie production lot where they would film mm, a lot right. of. Um, old movies or right, mm -hmm. westerns and whatnot so it was all film sets everywhere and it was great all these little buildings they even had little plaques on them where they could be removed for when they're shooting that would tell you what movies that the actual building was shot with you know in um and it was really cool because there's just all these little venues and things to go do and take pictures i mean i filmed a couple of movies out there just for fun and just because it was that way a lot of pictures were taken as well for uh, various different steampunk uh, games that i'm in now and lex as well and a couple of others that we were that we're friends with with the creators but i'm just like am i willing to drive all the way out to tucson to not leave a hotel in this case and i mean i'm willing to drive to dallas i'm willing to go a lot of places but i'm just kind of i'm kind of leery of this one right off because it's its first play time in a different location and i mean heck it's not going to be huge because it's a fairly small hotel actually mm. so, okay okay a couple things that. don't don't let that turn you off if you want to go please go tell me all about it i want to be wrong so <laughs> Well, I'm not going to go by myself. That's why I was hoping you guys would tag along. <laughs> I feel that. I'm probably not leaving Texas this this year yet. Um, yeah, true. true. Well, you still got to get your damn shot. <laughs> yes, I need to get shot. Uh, there's, there's a whole little, little row of people who want to who want to shoot me, so it's it's fine. There's they have to and get Nicole's first, first in line, Texas, <laughs> including her over here. Well, she probably doesn't want to shoot me. She at least wants to put me behind bars for money. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I pay her to put me behind bars every now and then too, just to get away from the riffraff, aka cops. Right. You need a well, you need a break. What's funny Since we're is we're talking about. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. What's funny is like some some of the like shop run like the the shop helps like the the vendor helps will come and get us to put their boss in the jail <laughs> so that they take a break. Um, because. Cause yeah, they don't take breaks, and so their 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 helpers are like, arrest this person, make them sit down. I cannot confirm and or deny this this all this allocation on us. Right, and, and those for, and those for you who are listening who who have who have not yet been introduced to Nicole, aka Natalie McTaggart. She is the sheriff. She runs the jail in Steampunk November for charity. So you can pay to have people put in the jail for charity, <laughs> and you know yes. for. I, for various amounts of time, depending on how much they pay, is that how it works? Uh, yes. So it's a dollar a minute. Um, so you throw your friend, if you even if you just want like a picture in the jail, uh, just for like a minute, I'll give give me a dollar. I'll throw your friend in there. I'll make a big spectacle of it, and we'll yell at them and lots run of around. Yelling. Yeah, lots of yelling. <laughs> uh, added a new person who just does nothing but has a big bell and runs around going shame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's original. Get, I bet we could get Caitlin to do that, to be oh, honest. Yeah. Better Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany will do it too. I I think yeah. one of the high points of, of the uh of Steve Punk November two years ago was being thrown in, in the jail myself. I had a great <laughs> time. No, we have mm. a lot of fun with it. So yeah. Yep. And oh, once okay, again, yes. Of events that are coming up. Uh, this weekend really needs to be discussed because oh, what's happening? Well, apparently everything. We uh -oh. haven't had anything happening right for a year and a half, and for some reason, this coming July sixteenth through eighteenth, we've got uh, Delta H Con in Houston. We've got Comic Palooza, 
also in Houston. Uh, Anime Matsuri, which is also in Houston, happened last weekend. So it's not a steampunk event, but at right. least it's not this weekend because there's also Texas Haunters Convention in Dallas. Yes, all of them, all at the same time. It, it seemed like the calendar was wide open. <laughs> they all picked the same weekend. But that's the that's the weekend we got to do it. <laughs> so we got to drive to Houston, drive to Houston, drive to Houston, drive to Houston, hit Dallas, and then somehow get back in time for work on work on Monday. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> right, right. Because Houston's an hour away, at least from Houston. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm four hours away from Houston, and I'm, I'm an saying, hour away from Dallas. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm just saying that Houston's even an hour away from itself. So I mean, like, we're it's we're not going to. Yeah, that's just once we. Yeah, you know, that's once we get into the Houston into the Houston area to get there. So then like two and a half, three hours to get to the Houston area. It like spans like two thirds of the freaking yeah. front of Texas there for the ocean. I know. I know it's every, it's big. It's big. Um, and right now there's nothing happening in Austin that I know of. I don't think there's anything happening in San Antonio. Um, there's a big fan fest happening in San Antonio, but I forgot what, I don't think it's this weekend, but it's not steampunk. So <laughs> uh, the San Antonio paranormal festival. Is oh. Coming, uh, oh, a month from now. Okay, oh. a month from now. Good, good. Is that right? No, that's in September. No, sorry, never mind. Nope, I don't know anything. <laughs> Nothing happening. Nope. The man who made the calendar <laughs> for the Patreon doesn't know anything. <laughs> it's a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always a work in progress. Yeah. Rita Rita just posted and she's absolutely correct. Uh Steampunk November is looking for volunteers this weekend. Um, to tear down some stuff and put some stuff back up. So if you're in the North Texas Fort Worth area and you want to, you know, spend some days in the hot summer sun and build some stuff. Helping uh, out awesome thing. And socializing exactly. and meeting yeah. the people. Yes. Um, if you want to meet the crew of Steampunk November, well, a good portion of them anyway, um, go to their Instagram. It's just steampunk november um and you can get all the information on that so awesome if i live closer i would definitely go blow stuff up with them if i didn't have to work all weekend i would totally be doing that too but are they, are they blowing stuff up no they're not blowing stuff up but they're like <laughs> um, jack, you're spreading rumors. If, take, if, take. If, if jack was there he'd be blowing stuff up yeah. well you never <laughs> Also, never know with those guys. Like you never know, <laughs> they might be. But I know for a fact that they're taking hammers to things. And what's the easiest way to remove that porta potty? <laughs> Explosives. <laughs> well, if you know oh, where the with old the, with the added with the added bonus of putting those trench in there too with the explosion. <laughs> um, if you know where if you know the grounds and you know where the old drink hut is, uh, that's mm -hmm. what they're taking down. So. Oh. I thought, you could, I, th I thought you could drink in all the huts. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, not the tavern, not not the beer hall. Okay. Just, just that place, I think, is a little like it's a little stand. It's in the in one, the newer area. Yeah. Oh, like in the back area. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I haven't. Okay. Over there where they have like the big wire. It looks <laughs> I, anyway, the thing yeah. with the wires I, and the, the Eiffel <laughs> Tower. Yes, the there. Eiffel Tower. Thank you. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's that's the one. There's like three different drink cuts, so it's one Hush of them. You. Not, not, not well, you I gotta I gotta admit, the last time I was at Steampunk November, I was stuck. I was in a booth with for, for Texas Steampunk Connection, so I didn't get around and see as much. So I might have missed I, a few things. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things of when I'm a when I'm a vendor, I have to I send Lex out and she goes and hits all the stuff. And then usually I can try to find a time to go out also and yep. hit all the bumps at least once as well and hand out cards again. And we then we get together on the last day and like Lex and I will plan out, yeah, we want these items from these shops, and then we try to find time and most of the time I yeah, well, it's, it's also it's also not the shopping that I missed. I missed a lot of the acts too. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Well, the only well, times I really get to see any of it is when we're running bounties. Like, <laughs> like I get a few minutes occasionally to go around and shop for myself. But uh, no, I really only 
know what's where because I'm running bounties. So I only get to see the I only get to see like the main action on the main stage when I'm arresting the head lead singer. Yes. <laughs> Because I only, because if I if I get a, a bounty, fan. well, if I get a bounty for them, I have to wait until their show is over. So might as well just go up at the beginning of the show and wait the entire show <laughs> and watch that, the show. That watch the isn't show. That how, isn't that how the Blues Brothers movie ends? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> they wait, for- but oh wait, we have to watch the show. <laughs> yeah, can't make a scene. That's funny. No, if well, I ever get up on stage, I definitely want to hire Nicole to get me off the stage <laughs> before my my speech is completely done. Just because it, it sounds like the best way to end a speech, being hauled off while trying to like grab the microphone and like you know do my thing. Therefore, I can cut my speech short because I only re- wrote like half of it. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but we, I mean, we are going this year, right? We are going to see Punk November, guys. That is the guys, plan. I'll guys, be taking okay. up tickets here shortly. Um, yes, I haven't bought my tickets yet, but I will be buying my tickets. And like I said, I'm going to try the the other Comfort Inn that you mentioned. That's closer to more food <laughs> on the other side, I guess. No, 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 not Comfort. Not a Comfort. Oh, oh. Holiday Inn Express. Oh, well, I don't. I you know, I can get free, I can get a free room at well, Holiday. I think, right. at I think Comfort there is Inn. a Comfort Inn right next to it. So it's it's the one in Alvarado, Texas, is the one I really enjoy. So I'll look I'll look to see if there's Comfort Inn there because I I mean because uh because of my job I do get a lot of stays and I have a lot of points and I can get free nights. <laughs> so it, yeah. that's that that's that's a bonus no, for me. Definitely makes sense for you to go to Comfort Inn. I'm just I yeah. think there's one right in the same parking lot. It's like that's how it is in um. <sighs> Where we yeah, stay, there's a Holiday Inn right next to the Comfort Inn, but it's, yeah, there's so not I that think they're thing. almost owned by the same company, probably. Yeah. Oh, Rita says she's got tickets. All right, Rita, she's a, she's ahead of us. <laughs> um, I'm cast, so. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh. But... So. That's right. I got I got to see if I can find someone who wants to either run a booth with me or. Don't well, even, I think I, uh, I Jenny, about... Jenny, Jenny, maybe Jenny Lynn Shaver. Jenny's are you been... are you getting a booth? Jenny and Kitty, we're going to help you out. Yeah, yeah, and also um, Albatross will probably be getting their booth together. I actually talked to Ben here the other day. He was streaming on his uh, on his Twitch yeah. channel. I, mean, I I'll just see, I'll just see this Call of Duty, and I'm just like, <laughs> hey, Steampunk November is going, and he's like, drop everything. I gotta call all the crew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, yep, Blackwell will have a booth. Yeah. Uh, no, I just I just need a place to drop my uh, my my table runner for Texas Steampunk Ste- Texas Steampunk Connection. That's all I need. And honestly, <laughs> I'm thinking about just dropping off a bunch of cards this year and just wandering around and having fun. Yeah, and, I think we we have a blast if we do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I actually want to do more like interviews and um, just more video. We've done that. We've, yeah. Well, yeah, we haven't done video, but we've done interviews. I mean, that's what we did when we were there with the booth. We did a lot of interviews, and like I said, the first year. We actually had Frenchie and the Punk. We had an interview with them. We we found a spot and did an interview with them. I can interview um, people in the jail. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> go for it. I just remembered that we have like a cast meeting in September, and I totally forgot. Um, you have time. So you have time. What do you, have, what do, you <laughs> yeah. do next? Yeah. No, I got to get the boyfriend a costume together by then. So that's 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 why I'm like, ah, crap. That shouldn't be hard. You have time. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, it's, I mean, you know, it's almost it's, August now. I mean, you have like not enough time. <laughs> I totally have enough time. But... <laughs> okay. I think okay. we should. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do our homework a little bit here. Let's start off. I'll ask you. Um, what do you want? Do you want? You guys want Roku Roku Punk or 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 Diesel Punk? <gasps> Which one? Choose. Why do we have to what choose? Is, because I Ro- have I have one of each. Roku okay, Punk is uh, basically. Punk. That you mean Rococo Punk. Oh, sorry, Rokoku Punk. Sorry, oh, <laughs> Roku, okay. Roku is my bad. My internet streaming television. Rokoku, 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 Rokoku. I don't know. I, on demand picture I like film. Rokoku. Rokoku okay. Punk. It is then. All right okay. then. I I know what Rokoku is. I was like, what's Roku? <laughs> like, my bad. I just I I speak I speak I speak funny times. <laughs> uh, I was like, are yeah, we doing see. like? What do you like, got? What do you got? All right, let me share the screen real quick. It, obviously, this is going to be a shock to everybody, but yes, it is another comic book <laughs> that I have found. It is called Seven Swords. Ooh. Essentially, as a weary and jaded to D'Artagnan is joined to a final conflict with the wicked Cardinal, what's his name? Richelieu. Richelieu, whose ruthless quest for power has led him to the supernatural. 
but the last musketeer can't defeat this infernal enemy alone. So he re he, re he recruits Don Don Juan, Captain Blood, and Sereno de Vergiac. So it's basically like uh um what's that one with the ah I it was in my head a minute ago. Uh, uh um yes, that one. Yes, with uh with uh Tom oh, Sawyer wow. and um there was a movie. Um uh, yeah, with Sean Connery. Um yeah. Oh, it's Sorry. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yes, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. It's like that, because now it has D'Artagnan, the last musketeer, Don Juan, and Captain Blood, and Serial de Vergiac. They're going to go defeat the wicked cardinal. <laughs> and it, it and that yeah, it's, it's, there's only the first, only the first issue was out, number one here. And yeah, it was basically the starting to get together the crew for this, for this last mission to stop the cardinal. Um, and it was fun. So it sounds like, it sounds like they're riffing off Seven Samurai. Probably, yeah. That's exactly it. <laughs> Except, like Samurai I said, the, card the, the Cardinals doing, the, you know, the Cardinals dipping into the supernatural, and you know, you know, Sir Vergiac. That's, I mean, I, I'm, I'm considering it Roku, Roku. Uh, you say it, you know. Anyway, Rococo. Rococo. <laughs> yeah, Rococo punk. I don't know why I can't say that word. <laughs> what I want to know what makes it Rococo though. That's that time it's because period. The time it's a time that period. Time period? Uh, it's, yeah, uh, it's, it's washbuckler, 17th century. Um, yeah. Sort of earlier than we usually work with. Um, gotcha. Powdered wigs. and. Mm -hmm. uh, That's mostly, what I think when I swords. think Rococo. I don't think swashbucklers. I think the fancy Frenchman with the powdered wigs. So that's why I was like, like I'm confused. <laughs> fancy Frenchman with powdered wigs and musketeers. Are are the same? They happen at the same time. The yeah. Same space. Gotcha. I am not as familiar with that time era, so that's why I was a little confused. Yeah, before the... before that time era, and directly after that time period. <laughs> but not that I'm... time period. <laughs> that, not that one. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, we, we we watched the three. It was a Musketeer movie where it was where they had like the fl the flying ships and everything and yeah, cogs and that it was, was it, like the worst three Musketeers movie. Yeah, it was bad, but. <laughs> It, but it had the elements for for punk, you know, with Coco Punk, you know, so with the with the yeah, yeah, with yeah. the special traps and the punk and the the flying ships and everything. They weren't they weren't blimps. They were actually flying ships, you know, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, um, yeah, I'd watch that again. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's what that that's what I found is yet another another one, and it is on the list of the over one hundred comic books. That you can get access to if you join our Patreon. <laughs> names, um, names, not the actual comic book. Unless you're taking pictures of right, you get you get, you get a box. list of you comic books. Tonight. Yes, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to send you the comic book. I'm sorry. I don't have that much money. <laughs> I just barely have Literally, enough to buy them for I myself. Referring to, I was referring to Seven Samurai, the classic 1954. Uh, Black and white samurai movie by Akira Kurosawa. Oh, okay. Not not the more recent anime based on Akira Kurosawa. <laughs> okay, um, oh, cool. I was and I think I'm not yeah, sure which is which, but I think Kurosawa was riffing off the Western movie, the uh, the Fabulous Seven. I think. Oh, I thought it was the other way around. I thought the Fabulous it Seven was the other way around. Seven Samurai. I don't know. <laughs> Depends on I which one was, was which. Really influenced by by westerns. Or again, the other way around. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and as I was saying, it's like like I said, you know, Don Juan, Captain Blood, Sir de Vergiac, um, D'Artagnan. Those are just four out of the seven. They haven't listed the other three. <laughs> well, it's only the first comic. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I don't know who they're going to be. More. I'm mostly convinced <laughs> that Hollywood doesn't have any new ideas anymore. So everybody just rips off everybody. But that's just me. Well, I mean, outside <laughs> of outside of Marvel and the stuff that. Like, Everything else just seems like, well, it's just let's redo what we did back in the 90s. It was good. It worked then. And nostalgia will carry it. Except see, I, nostalgia's ending quickly. Right. And I think it would be better if they were like, you know, they remake into the good stuff. What if they remade the stuff that didn't work, but actually make yeah. it work? <laughs> you know? like, give me the rest of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen story. <laughs> so Other than the seven pages that they based the entire movie on in the comic. Yeah. I, I probably... I probably just, 
saying what everybody all already knows, but the reason they don't do that is they want a guaranteed winner. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking for a guaranteed winner, you don't reach for the losers. You reach for the one that already won. But they mess up the guaranteed winners yeah. sometimes. Like um, I'm gonna oh, yeah. say, um, Total Recall the remake was terrible. Uh, um, you know, RoboCop the remake was terrible. Uh, you know. It was just boring. It was not. So, so they had they, they had it, and then they screwed it up. You know. So. Yeah. Of course, then we can't get a good Star Wars or Star Trek movie recently. You know, since like a, only a couple of them have been. Well, well it was like that with the original with the original movies. There were you know the even ones were the good ones, and the <laughs> well, no, so, the odd ones were the good ones. Sorry. Yeah, I, I applaud George Lucas and the whole fact that he's more of a scientist. We're not really a scientist. What's the right word for it? Um, he he likes to play and try new and different things. Mm -hmm. Star Wars was just one of his things he was playing on. Then oh gosh, it made him a whole lot of money. He's like, I got to go forward with this to fund right. my other projects. And did you know this? Did you know the Star Wars almost started a war? With who? Um, I forget the countries, but it's in the desert area of Asia. Okay. They were filming on the border between two warring states. Tunisia. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, um, makes sense. Oops. And um, <laughs> they thought the Jawa. Explosions. They thought the Jawa ships were war vessels. <laughs> Well, they got wow. treads and everything. Yeah, yeah. From definitely from a distance, that would look crazy. I Something. mean, just imagine, you know, tiny little Jawas. Bob it, bob it, bob it. <laughs> Into <laughs> war. <laughs> Let's go to war with Tunisia. They have, they have, they got some mercenaries. Yep. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, say what you will about George Lucas and how some people say, oh, he ruined Star Wars with uh, ja with Jar Jar Binks or whatever. But it's like. But originally, like he's like they told him when he was making the movie, he's like, "You can't do that." And he goes, "Well, <laughs> so he made his own special effects company yep. and did it." <laughs> you know, it's like he, like a lot Skywalker of things. Skywalker sound, industrial light, and magic. Yeah, he uh, just he says, "What do you mean I can't do that? I'll make it myself." You know, it's like whatever. He was I'm a sorry. risk taker. He was a As risk a... taker, and that's why he was mm -hmm. so successful. And yeah. it's also why he ruined Star Wars. Yeah, because he took well, a risk, and that one didn't work. As a kid, as a kid, I already loved Star Wars before the prequels came out. But then as a kid, watching Jar Jar just be a goofball, like, that caught my interest more. And so I've yeah. been... A, it appealed a, to the younger crowd. Yeah, definitely yep. appealed to the younger crowd. I mean, just like the, you know, when I, I was a lot younger when when the original three came out, so, and I loved them. And as the rest of the nostalgia carried me the rest of the way. <laughs> you know, I, so. still, I still adhere to the whole Darth Jar Jar concept. I think he was in on the whole thing. But, uh, yeah, I think I think that was the original plot, but we didn't get that far. The reason no. being is because everyone hated him so much, and that even if they did turn him bad, it wouldn't be redeemable enough. And that the problem was he was supposed to be lovable and cute, so that when he turned bad, it was like, ha! Not, oh, this is still terrible, right? But, but we digress. Uh, we yeah, digress yeah. a lot again. <laughs> that yeah. was my homework. Uh, Fax, what's your homework? What did you find? Okay. Uh, well, I. I found something to me new and different. Um, it has a lot to do with our lockdown in this last year, year and a half. There is a, a movement and an aesthetic style that, as far as I know, has nothing to do with steampunk. So I'll, I'll, I'll pre preface this with nothing <laughs> okay. to do with steampunk. Okay. Um, but is tell me if, if enough clues give you give it up uh it embraces like isolation and uh going out into nature it does it does like the the nostalgia of the victorian and edwardian edwardian styles is it cottage core i it's bet it's cottage core yeah <laughs> I, lex told me about that cottage core yesterday and i was like i have not heard of this explain so let me let me uh let me share some screen doop, doop. So I actually like goblin core type mm -hmm. stuff, and it's more like the foresty mushrooms. Like you're in the forest a whole lot. Um, it's it's more about like the goblin beauty of things, asymmetrical yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, so we're I thought this yeah. was really really cool. It it's should be on here very, talking about this. 
Okay, you have, to, you have to you have to explain more for the people who are listening and not watching. So okay. essentially, cottage core is like if you took Thomas Kincaid and you know made that kind of the, the that, that's a good start. Is Thomas Kincaid would be considered cottage core? It's it's like very floral attire, like very flowy kind of attire when it comes Wonderful to like landscapes. decorating houses. It's like lots of like plant life, mostly flowers, um, kind of lighter tones, whereas like goblin core has like darker, darker earthy flavor. tones. You see, yeah. I've heard I've heard of cottage core, but I've never heard of goblin core. It's <laughs> so, basically yeah. a hard it's 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 hardcore cottage core. Is, is okay. Core. It's still it's like, like if the cottage was rotting a little bit. For goth? It, oh, yeah, it's the goth, goth it's the goth core. version of cottage core. <laughs> okay. That's why I like it so much. <laughs> Also, I love mushrooms. They're just so cute, even though they're like poisonous. But that's great because cute and poison, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, what I found is uh, it, it it really looks for the sort of uh, uh, romanticizing the rural country lifestyle. And mm -hmm. what what I first thought of was like it's it's the Hobbit lifestyle, right? Yes. <laughs> you're, you're the English countryside, eating seven meals a day, gardening is hot, and uh, drinking. going on picnics and foraging. Um, uh, As Jenny and, says, it's and, a bit whimsical, it's a bit whimsical but as Cottage Core is a little witchcraft. Look at uh, uh, thing going. And so I thought this is sort of a perfect aesthetic style that can be embraced and then a layer at like steampunk becomes a layer on top of that okay like a okay, like a skin yeah. well, it's kind of yeah, like, like steampunk you, you comes in now with like the moral victorian and the lifestyle that you would need to actually live out there with it and you've got your your your, your victorians mm -hmm. and then on top of that you've got your weird science and your 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 gear punk to to sort of play with on top of the cottage core style, or for goblin core, you've got more supernatural um, added into it. And uh, again, you're exploring nature, uh, looking for, you know, dark so it's spirits like the, and that it's sort like of It's like the base of your picture. It's like, here's where, kind of like where your character's from. And then you just start adding little entries into little int intricacies on top of it. Yeah. So if I, you imagine hippies. Like every Miyazaki movie, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Bob Ross. Bob Ross was cottage core before it was cool. Yes. Bob Ross was cottage core. <laughs> yes. So I kind of think of cottage core as like the Victorians when they went to their summer homes, like if they had summer homes, just out in the middle of nowhere, where they don't have to impress anyone, so they dress in more like flowy gowns instead of the you know tied up corsets all nice. the time yeah you can kind of let loose yeah oh yeah Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> oh there's more comments and from what i could see uh it seemed like this was much more approachable um for for ladies yeah, yeah all of these these sort of features are really attractive to to uh women and it's really, it seems that they've really embraced the LGBTQ community. Um, that that it, it's it's sort of wide open for uh, trans ladies, or you know, uh, you know, I, you know, everybody, everybody, trans and uh, women of color uh, feel like they can, they have an opportunity to take ownership. Of their cottage core lifestyle, which I thought was really cool. Um, I found it the things I've gotten gotten into in my life, like LARP, um, steampunk. They always can. They they always seem like they're mostly white people. Yeah, and that's I'm I'm making generalizations that are probably. Um, <clears throat> Not true, but for me, it's always felt like I, I don't see a lot of people of color or as many as I wish I could hang out with. 
Yeah. yeah. What, yeah I'm not enough. That. I'm not enough for you. <laughs> Am I just a you token Mexican? You're, you're, you're an excellent Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I still feel like, you know, I, I'm the, there's just too many white people in my life. I can say the same. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this this sounded really cool. Ow, yeah. cat! Sorry, I, I saw a lot of uh, of uh, TikToks of of women who were, you know, going for the cottage core aesthetic, and, and they were women of color, and they seemed like really excited and happy, and that's something I can get excited and happy about. Yeah, so, according, yeah. According to Jenny, it's, it was a uh, new eight months ago, so it's just it's a relatively new phenomenon that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> um. So also, like Pinterest, Pinterest has some really good ideas on. I'm a Pinterester. I I don't I don't I'm not very good at the DIYs or anything like that. But yeah, so Pinterest is where like I get a lot of my ideas. My kitchen is going to be cottage core whenever I get a t kitchen again. Um. Goblin core, actually, because mushrooms. <laughs> anyway, um, you get the old set of mushroom like flowered sugar holders from like the seventies. I already, was, like, I already have things. salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> <laughs> nice. My mom used to own back that I'm probably sure are still in boxes somewhere <gasps> in her attic. Yeah, no, I, they're if, mine. You can't have them. I'm sorry. Damn it! I buy them <laughs> off of you. <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, I have money. Take it. Everything has a price. <laughs> No, yeah, no. Um, Pinterest has been my best friend when finding because I love these aesthetics. Like, like they are so open to everyone that it. I think that's kind of the coolest thing about them is that they don't they they don't have they're not a what I like to call a closed practice or anything like that. Anybody can like they it took off on TikTok and here we go. Like, so does so. this mean we're going to be seeing you in a Little Miss Muffet? Uh, cottage core steampunk get up. Uh, no, I have a goblin witch that works. That's okay. got mushrooms. Facts, we we gotta work. We gotta work. <laughs> yep. I I wore my goblin. I wore my goblin witch to the Renaissance mm -hmm. Festival this year. So nice. she's she's probably gonna come to steampunk too. <laughs> well, I mean, I gotta say, I am not a costumer. I am not a sewer. Um, I don't make my own costumes. So. If but I'm willing to pay people who are who want to make costumes for me. So you know, <laughs> yeah. It's 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 hard to find the it, weirdly enough, it's hard to find the people who are willing to to do it too. I know that's paid, the problem, which surprises me because there's so many people online. They're like, only if I could find someone who wanted to pay me money to make them stuff. And I'm like, I have 30 people who want stuff. Here's all their numbers. <laughs> oh, I don't have time to make their stuff. I'm trying to make my own stuff. So if y'all guys want to prove me wrong, find me a, find me a, 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 a hungry seamstress. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm I always, that. I'm always willing to pay for a costume and I'm, I'm, I, I, I have no problems with that. Um, I mean, yeah, exactly. I have, I have downsized my sewing significantly in the last three years since I was going back to school and then mm -hmm. I work all the time. So I don't have like a whole summer off. Like I yeah. used to as a teacher. <laughs> right. Yeah. Time's always an issue. I know. Yeah. So I started making a sundress last week and I still haven't finished it. So it'll be ready well, by November, right? Well, right, Rita, exactly. Rita wants to do a steampunk little bo peep. Yeah, are that'd be awesome. A, are you going to have a mechanical sheep? I want to be one of her <laughs> sheep. I'll have my hat on. <laughs> I think you should make your crook like detachable so that you can like lasso the the, the sheep. It has like a chain. Chain. <laughs> chain. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Everything from Zelda. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was just making an idea. That's hilarious. Oh, That's great. That time you had the big like. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Moving on. So. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I accidentally kicked facts out. <laughs> Hey, Fax, come back in. Oh, you're welcome, Rita. You should make it detachable. <laughs> ah. I have different heads on it for different things. You can have like an entire like. Sorry like, about that, Fax. Like, oh, did you do that? I thought it was yes, me. I did. I did that. Sorry. A utility <laughs> belt of different attachments to the end of this into the staff. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Or you hey, can wait, have it, like you... roll out in a big leather thing, and you can like on a table, you can choose one you want before you go and save whatever 
sheep is in trouble. Right. Also, you could have like an attachment to where if you have a cat stuck in a tree, you could just stick the the crook up there, but it has like a cat yes. grabber. <laughs> it's a big nice. lint roller. <laughs> That's, that's hilarious. I'm full of ideas today, apparently. Great. Great. Write them down. <laughs> well, okay. So that was uh, facts. What do you have for us, Jack? Well, so I watched this really stupid thing a couple days ago. And oh, yeah. I, I, I watched it. Pictures of it. You watched it? I oh, watched it. Isn't it pretty? It, it's terrible. Oh, my God. It was, it was very cringy. Very, very oh, cringy. Exceedingly yes. cringy. But hilarious nonetheless. Lex and I were just sitting there going like just just barely able to watch it, just loving the fact that we're laughing to death from it. Yeah, it, it hurt sometimes. It, it hurt really. It, it hurt. hurt all the way through the movie because it's. So tell them what we're talking about. Tell them what we're talking about. It's a movie called America, the motion picture, and it is <laughs> on a, Netflix. <laughs> on Netflix, it is of course it is three D generated. It is fantastic and no. terrible. Essentially, terrible. it's about. America, if it was told by like the guys from like My Drunk History, yeah. So I was thinking, it's like this is very and, My Drunk uh, History looking, and it's like <laughs> I won't even and had and had an entire like TV anime division just like decide to write what they said, and essentially they're pulling everybody from American history from all time periods into like one time period to fight off the British colonialism. Yeah, and like uh, George George Washington and Abe Lincoln were best buds. Yeah, and. <laughs> um, you had oh, what's 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 his name? The electrician, um, Edison. Thomas Edison in, in this, but he's a little different in this, which I absolutely <laughs> loved. And they had a, it does have a little bit of a Marvel. You can tell when Marvel rolled in a little bit, and they have a whole lot of stuff from Marvel that kind of fit with the whole like fight scenes. And then they had Star Wars just oodled through it because yep. apparently Star Wars is very American. And uh, <laughs> even though most of the actors are British, well, <laughs> most of the yeah, but you'll notice that all the British that are all the British actors yes. are in the Empire. All the yes, American exactly. actors are the rebels. Exactly, which was fun. Oh. And just a little throw off on that because we're, we apparently have already gotten Star Wars stuck in this one. Um, Cliff from uh, Cheers is one of the officers in Empire Strikes Back on the Hoth base. So, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. I'm going to share my screen because there's a few. I'm going to just kind of like stop through Some the screen show sh a little bit. And yeah, we, uh, yeah, we can't really no do a lot. Sound. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. just going to show stills mm -hmm. because it's um, kind of gets your idea of why I was so impressed or had fun with this movie. Let's see here. Yes. Sure. It, it, yeah, I, I, I was even to be in more Star Wars movies. They're out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he died. What the hell? Yeah. So. <laughs> This is the first shot that got me when I saw the like there was the, the streaming preview that Netflix does. Is yeah, we're these looking at the record buses that are ATATs. Yes, they're, they're walkers yeah. strapped to them. And I'm like, I, I need to know more about this movie. That was the first thing. Now, <laughs> the opening sequence is terrible. It's the right, it's the signing of the Declaration of Independence, and mm -hmm. it's like a frat party going on between yep. all these guys. And it's Oh, beer pong, and it's terrible. It's horrid, and it's hard to. Yeah, like, they're 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 playing what they're going to start. Are we going to start with we the people, or so we the white many, yeah. the white people, or whatever? Yeah, it's we the we white, the white, white people. people. Yeah. And uh, but it's it's so dude, bro. It hurts so bad. But yeah. if you I mean, terrible. It, I can imagine it kind of went a little bit like that. I'm at least. Sure. It's like we can't <laughs> say have, we the rich white people. Yeah, but then you have um, this guy here who is Benedict, uh, Benedict Arnold. Benedict Arnold, who is the bad guy. And uh, he and a werewolf, <laughs> yes, and a werewolf. Got to keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it fresh here. We have Benedict Arnold being. A oh, werewolf. by the way, spoilers, but no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Playing him is the the singer of Lonely Island. Um, of course, it is. Oh, uh, Andy, Andy, and, and, yeah. yeah, Andy Samberg plays the werewolf, and uh, King George <laughs> is played by Simon Pegg, and yeah. so. And really King George is on a floating platform. That's actually kind of cool. But, yeah, it, it's very <laughs> much it's very much imperialist, like Darth yeah. Vader kind of. Yeah, it's kind of gory. But there are some very interesting moments in this where I it, I don't know. It's just so overly fantastic, and there's a lot of steampunk going on in here mm -hmm. that it's hard to. I'm trying to. It, it's 
I don't know. I watched it. I, I, I recommend watching it if there's no children in the room. It's exceedingly <laughs> it's got a lot of language in it, but it's very cringeworthy. It's exceedingly cringy and just just try it if you feel like it or be drunk when you watch it. And definitely be drunk when you watch it. Yes. <laughs> so uh that's that's my that's my thing. I enjoyed it. I was actually very sober. I mean, I yes, I admit I, I was sober. I admit it was very entertaining, but yes, I was cringing really hard. Um, we just lost somebody again. He, that was him. That was not me. <laughs> he is. He he kicked himself out. Jack's gone. <laughs> That's I was saying, find his back. <laughs> right. It's like I don't know why he made me watch this thing. I hate him for it. No. <laughs> I didn't watch so, it. As I was saying about Jack, I don't know why. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wrong button. Oh, hello, Jack. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was. There were some laughing out loud moments. I have to admit, but a lot of it was very cringeworthy. Um, the jokes were very dude bros. Um, <laughs> like, once, once, um, they, once the plot got moving, the dude bro part did calm down a lot, and uh, yeah. uh, it was still there, but yeah. it was a lot better. I, I, I felt for Geronimo. Um, I was, yeah, I was on his oh, side. Oh, um, was, so. <laughs> yes, Geronimo was great. Um, <laughs> I, although I do have to admit, the, the when they sang "Freebird" for the national anthem, it was hilarious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That made me laugh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So check it out if you want to. It's it's um, it's interesting. I'm gonna leave it that way. If I had to put stars on it, I put I put four stars if you're drunk, and I put two and a half stars if you had to watch for a college education, like an episode, like like you had to write a paper about it or something. <laughs> yeah yeah like i said exactly what he was saying earlier is like yeah it's very much as it was from if you ever heard of a uh, drunk drunk history people yeah it's exactly what they are They're, they get these comedians they get drunk and they talk about history um that's what this this seemed like that was very much that like they wrote this <laughs> you know <laughs> and then had some exceedingly talented artists yeah it up. and yeah there, it was there was there was a lot of steampunk feel to it you know mm -hmm. especially with uh, with edison running around um with her like paul revere being awesome with his <laughs> <laughs> yes paul revere was funny uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah okay so it, if, if, if you want to chuckle here and there and with some cringing go ahead and watch it i'll, I'll say so yeah. i'll say that um but it, so therefore, it's definitely the next time it. you run into someone you're like hey did you watch that movie and the other person turns to you and says yeah then you'd be like yeah and you'd be like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, so, that moment of connection without actually having to worry about it. Right. We can maybe we can reenact some of it at Steampunk November. No, never mind. Forget I said that. <laughs> so <clears throat> oh wow. Well, well, we're coming up on an hour now. Um, Nicole, did you do any did you have anything to introduce to us or you just joined us for the fun of it? That's fine. I, you don't have I, to. I just joined y'all because I, I had the opportunity today because Yeah, no worries, no I'm worries. Not Running around like a chicken with my head cut off today. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for joining us. Like I said, you know, I, I consider you you're, you are one of us, so you can come on anytime. Um, one of us. One of us. <laughs> one of us. <laughs> um, yeah, Plus I mean, you knew I, a lot I, about cottage core. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We, we exactly. Perfect timing. Core. Perfect timing. Yeah, yeah this is like the perfect ep episode for me to jump in it, on. Cause yep. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Um, okay, so quick update. Um, we, I have, we have me and my, well, Digital Rex Felix Productions, which is me essentially. We have recorded the first three episodes of the new podcast I'm working on, which is Steampunk. Um, or rather, yeah, it's, it's a Steampunk podcast. Uh, we have the, all the actors that put, put in their voices. They are doing great. I, now we're just gonna have to wait for me to do all the editing and sound editing and special effects and sound effects and all that stuff. So that's gonna take a while. But when, once the first episode is ready um i'm thinking in our patreon i will like the first scene if for at a certain you know the, the first scene i will have that on there for you can get to get listen to it early um for a certain you know i don't know we'll figure it out but that's not that's an that's idea an you know idea. and as as, yeah. as i finish the scenes you'll get to listen to the scenes as i finish them you know kind of things like scene one this month scene two next month blah blah, blah <laughs> kind of thing because we're not going to release the entire thing until the whole thing's done so you're going to get a really advanced listening to them if you join our patreon so <laughs> so that's that's the plan content. for that exactly <laughs> so that's the plan uh so um 
yeah, once again, uh, we, yes, as I was saying, we have a Patreon. Uh, we only have the one tier right now. We will be adding tiers in the future as we have content to give. Um, hopefully, it'll be some video content. Um, like I said, it'll be the podcast content. As that happens, that, that's, a, that's a little ways away, but it, look forward to that. Um, uh, don't forget to, you know, talk. There's, we have Steam Chess. We have Jack from Steam Chess. Tell us what, you know, what Steam Chess is, a monthly subscription service. Jack? Yes. And if y'all guys look right to the left side or your left, his right of Fax's hat above his, yeah, right where his finger was on his backs of his uh, bookshelf there. That was something we oh. had in one of your boxes recently. Yeah, you're pointing right at it, Fax. Thank you. The uh, <laughs> Beware of Octopus uh, sign. That's we cute. had that. Oh, it was great. I actually have one installed above my bath, uh, above my toilet now in the bathroom. <laughs> Perfect. <So. laughs> and uh, yes, so those were those were one of our premium items we had in the last box. They were fantastic. Uh, complete metal. They have a nice sheen on them. Everything. They make a weird, you know, clunky noise of metal when you flex them too much. And uh, but they're high quality products. I enjoyed them. I found I them. Also just like, we have to have them. Right. I also think that there's a future plan of having the very first full episode on a key fob in one of your boxes as well. Yes. The, and the we Punk have these cool podcasts. skeleton keys that we put data on that, that are USB drives. They look awesome, yep. by the way. <laughs> so that's what they'll be coming on. All right. So once again, well, yeah, we are at our time. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for listening. Once again, you can contact us at Steampunk Connection, Texas Steampunk Connection on Facebook. Texas Steampunk Connection at gmail.com for longer form. Oh, we got an email. I should bring that up real quick. We actually have an email. Let me read that. <laughs> let me let me get to the email real quick and I will read it. It was interesting. And uh yeah, they sent it directly to our to our email. I mean to the Texas Steampunk Connection email, not just to me. So I will I will share the screen again real quick here. Uh so if you female. All right, so it is from uh, Hiya Texas Steampunk Connection Steampunks. I thought you enjoy a free copy of our new edition of Frank Reed, Jr. issue number four. Um, the, the Extraordinary Adventures of Frank Reed, Jr. Frank Reed, Jr. with his st new steam main man in Texas or chasing the train robbers. Um, basically, apparently, as you know, this is what it says here. As you know, Fra Frank Reed, Jr. was the Tom Swift boy inventor hero of his era. Today in his 1800s, high tech seems retro and steampunk. But back in 1880s and 90s, when Louis Cenarins, can you pronounce that? That sounds good. When yeah. he wrote it, it was super futuristic high tech that boggled the minds of young readers. Um, they're in the middle of a project of re edit and reprint of all 187 of Frank Reed Jr.'s adventures with language updated for today's audiences. We think we owe it to our new, nearly forgotten American Jules Verne that laid the groundwork for American sci fi. Plus the fact that Louis Cenarins was Cuban American makes it doubly so to remember his legacy. If you'd like to take a look, I downloaded it. Unfortunately, I do not have the correct reader on my computer to to read it. <laughs> it's oh, an e no. you need a, you need an e-reader. Um, but also, if you go to um, um, Amazon Prime or Amazon, sorry, there's a, there's a list of all of them. There are dollar ninety nine for the Kindle editions. There's the the entire adventure series here. Frank Reed Jr. You can read okay, them. So which like a pretty to, dreadful. Yeah. Exactly. So what you need to do is download um, the Kindle app onto your yes. computer, install it, and it'll open up the EPUBs right away. You don't have to buy anything. Right. Yeah. You can do, you can do it on your phone, too. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, yes, basically. Thing, but, yeah. I mean, there's like, uh, yeah, like one of them, like uh, Frank Reed Jr. and his Steam Wonder. Uh, Frank Reed Jr. Jr. and his electric boat. Frank Reed Jr. and his new Steam Man or the young inventor's trip to the far west. Um, huh. Frank Reed Jr.'s new white cruiser of the clouds or the search for the dog faced man. Um, but so this is it, 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 cool. Yeah. And it, apparently it's also it's, it's for young readers. Um, so, you know, if you have children, they might like it. And it's very, very, very steampunk. Um, this should have been one of my homeworks. I should have waited for next week. But since it was an email, I figured, hey, we have email and we do read our email. Why well, read my our email? <laughs> so. And that's where, and this is and this yeah, is a free copy. I don't know how to get the free copy to everybody else. Um, I'll, I'll I'll send a copy. I'll send a to, to you three. Just email it to us. I'll forward. I'll forward you to it we'll right here. In the email, we can download it. There. Yeah. I'll hack into it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you and your hacking ability. 
So I don't know who I don't know who I don't even know who sent us this. Who sent us this? This is from Gil Ruiz. 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 Um, I don't know him. Maybe I, he somehow found us. And uh, thank you very much if you're listening or if you listen to our podcast in the future. Thank you very much for sending this. Um, and we will Our definitely look into these. Publishing company? Interesting. Oh, we'll see. I know. So, yes, that is, uh, that is, that seems very, ste- that seems very steampunk to me. And we have a, we have a cat and we heard a, and we have a dog. <laughs> we have animals. <laughs> yeah, they're asking for things. See, that's just it. I don't understand. Whenever I'm sitting in front of my computer, Anywhere else on this table, my cats are always walking in front of me. I sit right here. They don't walk in front of me. I'm going to have to move around. <laughs> so. No, anywhere I sit, Bob finds me. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. Uh, according, to, according to Vice Sci-Fi, Tom Swift just passed the 100-year anniversary. <laughs> so, yeah, I've never, I've never personally heard of Tom Swift. I'm, 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 I was very happy to, to get this email. So I'm going to definitely look into it. I and mean, it's probably for – it sounds like it's for younger readers, but I think I would enjoy them anyway. You know? <laughs> Oh, shush. Doggo. So that being said, once again, thank you very much, everybody, for listening. Um, I, I I read our emails. So if you send it to Texas Steampunk Connection at gmail.com, I'll read them. Um, and I'll probably show them off on the, on the show. Um, any questions or answers? Or if you like once again, if you have a if you if you know of a steampunk comic book that I have not mentioned before or is not on that list, um, send it to me. I'll I'll look into it. Uh any um, complaints, um, critics, criticisms, find us on, uh, find us on, um, <laughs> find, find us on Twitter. So <laughs> I like saying that. Okay. <laughs> how about you? Anything else you guys want to say? Has anybody checked the Twitter? No I don't, I don't know how to read Twitter. it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we there is a Twitter account. Anymore. <laughs> yeah. We do have a Twitter account, but it's, but it was messed up. It was like Texas steam or something like that. And it got kind of, you know, not steampunk uh, <laughs> people who are <were> joining, <laughs> but, <laughs> so it got out of control really fast. Um, okay. Just say that. But um, oh. yeah, <laughs> we may have to we may have to look into this. This might be a <laughs> yeah. It was more adult. Let's just say it's more adult oriented, um, but oh, not what I intended. Oh, I actually actually have a funny story with that. Um, some of some of the people we do business with, artists, uh, they were talking to us, and one of the girlfriends like logged onto the cell phone and was like, "What is this?" And it's like it is you know, steam chest, and she thought it was like something like that, yeah. something completely off. And he's like, "No, no, no! <laughs> I'm making leather for for the for the steampunk people, not not for anything else." Steamy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> steamy chests apparently. Yeah, steam, steam, yes, steampunk at night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> steampunk after dark. There you go. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Too many Nickelodeon children for that. First world <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, uh, Steampunk After Dark's already been claimed by the by um <laughs> by uh Next on Cinemax. <laughs> Just like how did you like how do you work Texas in there? Mm. Anyway. Oh, um side note, if you're paying attention to Steampunk November, they're dropping hints as to who one of the main attractions is gonna Ooh. be like one of the performing artists. So if you can figure out who it is. I know who it is. What are the hints? What are the hints? I mean, I mean, I know who it is too, but <laughs> I don't. I don't um, know who it is. What are the hints? So, so there's like a wallpaper picture. It's all on their Instagram. Uh, oh, there's like well, a see, wallpaper I don't, I don't picture of a bunch of bats. Uh, also, oh. there's like a skeleton. Oh, it is. No, that's all you have to say. <laughs> He's got wonderful boots. I used to talk to him in the hotel all the time for, you know, for breakfast time. He'd come out yeah. Like, leather boot talk about you know. So I mean, Italian leather. <laughs> I know who it is, but <laughs> go look at the who it is. see. But so that's on their Instagram. I don't. I don't do it. I don't have Instagram either, so I don't. So. It might be on their Facebook too. Usually, their Instagram and Facebook kind of they're linked, so they post at the same time. So okay, so on tech, uh, Steampunk November Steam uh, Facebook. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to take another look. I might have missed it because yep. <laughs> Facebook does weird things on the feed. You know, you never know. Oh, yeah, but anywho, yeah, <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes. Awesome. So until next time, uh, everybody, mind, mind your gauges. Mind your gauges. <laughs> and Bob and says bye.